Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Your Friday is about to get a lot more fabulous. If there's one name that's synonymous with fashion in South Africa, it is Gavin Raja. He has done incredible work in South Africa and putting our country on the global fashion map. He's been a dear friend to me for just over 20 years, oh. no, 18 years now, and he yeah. is just literally dripping in talent. No, you guys share the same blood at this stage. <laughs> now he joins us today to chat about his latest collection, which is about more than just great designs, but it's about spreading a positive message, which is very important. Welcome to The Loft, Gavin. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure just to touch base with you because everything right now in Cape Town is all about fashion. And right, the, the theme that keeps coming up is sustainability, sustainability. So how does your collection speak to that. So I mean, the I mean, my invitation was quite uh, cryptic, but it was a question we posed, which is uh, which was just, must there be more? And I, you know, I worked with uh, Blonde Boy, Alvain Berger to create this collection and to work on it. And uh, what we were really looking at is, must there be more, as in violence? Do we need more disease? Mm -hmm. Do we need more poverty? Mm -hmm. Do we need more waste? And the fashion industry is really one of the biggest culprits in terms of waste mm -hmm. in the world. And um, at the same time, I was, you know, I was using the show as a platform to give voice to children and children's rights and champion their rights. And I mean, we have a huge problem, which is, you know, child violence and sexual abuse. And we don't really talk about it because it's not, you know, it's not a happy subject, but uh, I'm very well known for taking those things head on. And so I was using the show also as about, you know, that and must there be more violence, must there be more abuse and how do we end it? And so it was really, the collection was like almost post-apocalyptic and a vision for the future. And then obviously thrown into the mix of all this thing is, is you know, the, the world's plagued with a new virus and what is it doing? It's causing phobia, seclusion, you know, people being excluded. So the, in a way, the garments also, if you saw the full collection, there were things like plastic. So whilst it was giving a message of being recycled, it was also about this thing about this is a new suiting, this is what we're arming ourselves, we're yeah. wearing plastic gloves, we're wearing masks, we, you know, so all of this. So, I mean, really, it was, it, it was just really a show that was kind of posing many questions out there. Yeah. Totally. What kind of responsibility do you think the fashion industry has and how much power do you think the fashion industry has to create awareness about discussing all of these issues that you've just highlighted? So the fashion industry in general is kind of the, one of the best vehicles in terms of pushing out a message. I mean, um, it's got great convening power, it's got great visibility and platform and, you know, it so happened we're also spending 20 years in, in doing fashion and being in fashion. And one of the things was that I didn't want to leave a legacy of just pretty dresses. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to, if you've got some form of influence or visibility, whatever it is, use it for a good cause, for God's mm -hmm. sake, you know. Um, and I think more and more, we, the fashion industry needs to be a little less fickle and a little bit more responsible and accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think just also recognizing humanity of the, of the people involved in it, yeah. you know. And, Gavin, and he's right definitely and not scared to call people out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are so spicy, your hashtag, how fake. <laughs> I love that, no, no, I love that. I'm all for the spice. Yeah. But Gavin, you're speaking very global right now and the conversation yeah. is very universal. But honing into Africa in specific, yeah. designing Africa's future. What trends are you seeing picking up in terms of futuristic, current, and what to expect? You know, I don't think Africa is in a vacuum. I think if you want to be a global player in fashion, you've got to look at what's happening in the world. Uh -huh. I think for the longest time, you know, uh, people look at Africa and it's fashion has become very stereotypic. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's a very diff big difference between what's patriotism and cultural traditional dress versus fashion. One might be fashionable, but it's not fashion. I think for the future for us is, again, you know, my whole thing is about sustainability and creating resilient livelihoods for the people that work with me because, and the people I support in my business. I think that's very important. And I think for Africa to be a global player, you've got to be a global player within the world's economy. Mm -hmm. We've got to change the entire social landscape. We've got to empower people. Yes. So I think we've got to have those things. It's very important as, you know, in fashion, we're not just about the endless top-ups of champagne glasses. You know, we've got to be a little bit more 
substantial. No, and substantial yeah. is definitely what you are. You've got radical depth. I mean, we're speaking about a guy with, who's at a Harvard Business School <laughs> at the moment, yeah. who's like a spokesperson for UNICEF. And of course, is leaving a legacy behind of really pretty dresses, which by the way, is also f helping with sustainability. Because let me tell you, I've got some gowns in my mm. wardrobe that I've literally had for 18 years. And if I have to wear them tomorrow, they still look brand, brand new. You are amazing. Thank so you. let's see what happened last night. Tell us about some of these incredible So a lot of these finished. fabrics, these brocades, were made from recycled plastic bottles. The leather is all pineapple leather. Oh. So it's made out of pineapple skin, so it's a kind of new vegan leather. So that isn't actual leather, that's pineapple no, skin? pineapple skin. No. Yeah. So what happens if you get hungry a little later? Can you, you could chew on it a little <laughs> bit, I suppose. But the other thing was actually looking at, uh, you know, the provenance of fabrics, where it's, where it's made, how it's made, the, ch you know, issues around child labour. Yeah. Those things were very important. And again, if you look at um, things like for the details, we've tried to replicate some of the details of the makeup with uh, LDMA. And you'll see what they did was that we created this thing of uh, these mouths, which obviously, and these faces, which looked like kind of details of viral kind of things. I saw the disease. eye with the, clo with the closed yeah. eye was actually the open eye. That was yeah. so powerful. It was, and it was really kind of challenging people to yeah. look again, yes. think carefully what you're doing, look at things that, you know from a different perspective. And holistically. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Yeah. We've got the second suit here that I'm obsessed with. I think I can, talking about sustainability and wearing things over again, yeah. you can separate these pieces from the pants to piece. the jacket. Yes, it is. Okay. And the thing is what we've done for this season, we've asked our, uh, our client to bring back maybe things that we've done for them in the past and they could actually then, instead of having something brand new, have it remodeled, restyled, oh, okay. reinvented, remade. Um, and also, uh, all the garments are using kind of women that, you know, part of our nonprofit, which is the White Light Movement, to create things like beading. So it's also, again, who made your clothes, mm -hmm. you know, and how is your things made? It's, these are important questions to now, to now ask. Yeah. You know? Working with integrity, I see, I, it sounds like it's very, very important with you. And yeah not only speaking it, but walking the talk and doing it. I mean, we all think uh, vegan is only left for in the kitchen, yeah. but there's vegan material, there's natural materials, and we see Absolutely. you playing and using those. Yeah. Very beautiful. And still not compromising on quality. Yeah. And so again, you know, everybody's using a lot of kind of feather detail. This is not feather, it's a, a full feather, <laughs> if you want to call it that and what uh, is faux feather actually made from because like, it does have the same feeling it's got an it's, a, it's, it's oh, well actually strange enough it does it's it's actually acrylic oh, oh wow and i see that you also have brought in some asian inspiration with the sleeves yeah so uh again uh you know a lot of the silhouettes were kind of very asian inspired and it was also about um keeping that kind of sense of relaxed wear. You know, you could wear it over something in the evening, over a pair of jeans, it still would look good. Beautiful. Um, I mean, our signature oh, is still really yes. couture, yes. So, uh, a lot of pleating details. The so pleating is very big. You would have seen that also in Stefani's collection. Yes. And this final last look, I mean, I'm ready for the beach. Hello. She looks absolutely stunning. And I love the glitter and the sequence. Again, that attention to detail coming in. Yeah, and all of that's done by hand. Every what? single bead, every single piece of crystal is all stitched on by hand onto silk organza. So, uh, again, created by amazing women who have trained to do these, these beautiful things. From start to finish, the process of creating your look from inspiration to feeling it, putting it on your clients and loving it. How is it like for you in terms of in, Ga in the legendary Gavin Rogers head? How does it all come together? I, I think it's, you know, this question I've been asked, like, especially last night, all the like, how do you dream these things up? Yeah. And I think that you really, you know, it's travel, it's, it's really to be inspired and to be moved. And I think if you, kind of pursue these, you know, things that you're passionate about fearlessly, then these things kind of come naturally. But I think, you know, I also have a chance to play a bit and being in the business for a long more, a lot more time, so I can 
So I have to tell you, every time I go and see Gavin, and I say, I've got this coming up, I've got this coming up, I don't even tell him what I like, what <laughs> colour I'm interested in. He just has a little look at me, uh, looks me up and down, and just comes up with this incredible, incredible something. So there's a joke that we have <laughs> in the makeup room. All the girls can't wait for me to get married a few times because they can't wait to see the surprise wedding dress that we'll come up with. But <laughs> also, it's important for women these days to wear the clothing. And so yeah. it's very amazing that you wear the clothing. The clothing totally. doesn't wear you. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thank beautiful. you so much, Gavin. You're welcome. Love you. So we still have a live performance coming up by Nigerian-born singer Scooby Nero. <laughs> stay, stay right where you are. That's coming up after the break.